Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first of five High Vault Web Talks. We are broadcasting live here from Dresden into the world. So a warm welcome to all over the place where you join us this afternoon in this session. My name is Florian Schwarz. With me is Dr. Uwe Kaltenborn. Hello, Uwe, Director of Business Development of High Vault. And before we dive into the today's subject, which is are simulation tools the test lab of the future? This is the question of this session. Uwe, where are we here exactly? Yeah, we are exactly at the High Voltage Test Hall. Uh, this is the core of our uh, factory here. And what we can see is on this side an uh, impulse voltage system. Mm -hmm. On the other side, this is a support structure for a large reactor used for uh, cable testing. Impressing, and it's an interactive format. Uh, you can join us. Uh, we're going to put in the email address. You can join us uh, via chat. Uwe, you're going to take some questions later sure. on. And you are the man for the facts, and we see each other in a minute. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, I present you the experts that we have here on board. Um, we are very uh, honored to have uh, Ronny Fritsch here heading R&D at Siemens Power Transformer. Um, he has in focus the pressure of optimizing costs for testing, even by simulation tools. And he is very much interested to generate, of course, as much as possible information out of development tests to reduce test efforts later on. Hello, Ronny. Hello. Thank, Thank you that you are here. Um, and then we have on the other side, uh, Dr. Ralf Peach, the senior fellow here at HV, is his home turf, you can say. Um, he's chairman of Siegre Study Committee D1. He works with simulation tools at the edge of technology, you can say. He pushes grid components and equipment beyond existing limitations. We talk about this, but it's of course always for the best of the clients. And he prefers to test, to believe in his simulations. Hello, Ralf Peach. And live from Zurich, we have him uh, connected here via internet, uh, Professor Christian Frank. He is from the ETH, ETH Zurich. Uh, he has laid some fundamentals for simulating HV gas discharges for SF6 and alternative gases. Grüezi in die Schweiz, Professor Frank. <laughs> Good. It's okay. We start this talk with some statements that our experts uh, got. Christian Frank, um, your statement uh, is simulation results can only be as good as the underlying physical models allow. Can simulation replace testing? If you have the correct simulation models, then yes. And that's the key of the statement as well. I mean, we have been uh, on conferences or reading articles with spectacular, fantastic results from simulations have been deeply impressed. But sometimes when you then dig deeper into you see, oh, there have been models maybe used outside the region of validity or improper material data have been used. So the simulation worked correctly in a sense that it simulated what it was asked to simulate. But then the physical interpretation is, is, is difficult. In this sense, I would say, yes, if you have the correct simulation model, then it can replace testing, but unfortunately, or fortunately, because that's what we're working for, uh, not for all um, aspects, there is simulation models available. And um, yeah, this is part of our research. And we're going to talk about this, of course, in depth uh, w further on. Now to Dr. Ralf Peach, uh, you say in reference to the famous philosopher René Descartes, um, I think, therefore I am, that's what Descartes said uh, a long time ago, you could freely formulate or interpret, I simulate, so it works. Question Is it mark. truly as simple? No, that's exactly the point, as uh, Christian Frank said, um, the model could be quite well simulated reality. And if the input parameters are working, for example, we have gathered the information for some years, improved the model, then as Christian mentioned, then the simulation is quite good. But if you expand uh, or have new applications or new materials, then you definitely need um, experiments or if you have a production line, you cannot simulate faults because you know, never know what is going on. Mm -hmm. and that is the reason that I said it's not as easy. 
And you will underline this, of course, uh, during our talk with some examples. Yes. And of course, uh, your questions always are welcome to our web talk. We coming to the next statement. Uh, it's from uh, Ronnie Fritsch. And he says, quality must be verified by appropriate methods and procedures to ensure safe and reliable operations throughout the expected service life. Ronnie, can simulation reduce testing efforts? Sure, it can, yes. And um, it is in place already today. So simulation are used in order to reduce efforts uh, when, uh, for instance, these efforts are time lasting and uh, then simulations are used in order to extrapolate and to recalculate. Uh, most likely by today, simulations are more used in low, vo uh, low voltage equipment um, for power transformers, for instance. Um, today, still, um, the, the simulations uh, must be verified by testing, must be validated also by testing, and uh, at least testing is key in order to guarantee performance, reliability, and um, um, uh, emissions of, of uh, power transformers, for instance, and therefore Yes, simulations can replace, uh, can uh, support testing, but not yet uh, replace mm -hmm. testing. So it's always important really to look in the details, to look exactly um, w what is possible. Is it possible to, to generalize simulation results for manufactured grid components? <laughs> yes, in a, in a certain um, amount, I would say. Uh, it depends at least on the equipment you are considering. Um, Having in mind now, for instance, transformers, then uh, surely um, uh, simulations can replace this testing for uh, at least routine tests um, and um, can also be the results out of these simulations can be generalized for these kind of routine tests. But if you have a new type developed by using um, uh, simulations, uh, for instance, and uh, well, um, going beyond, let's say, the, the physical um, um, criteria and limits, um, then um, it is important to test this in, in, in type tests, in special tests. And if you have approved uh, this technology, then you for sure can use um, um, simulations. And th this uh, can be also be generalized for, uh, let's say, the same type of equipment. Ralf, with all your experience, what would you add uh, to, uh, to Ronnie's statement? Is it possible to generalize simulation uh, results for manufactured grid components? Mm, yes, you can, but first of all, we have maybe to, to clarify and to focus what is simulated. You can, for example, simulate electrical fields or magnetic fields. Mm -hmm. You can simulate the thermal behavior of the materials, also earthquake um, mm -hmm. movements like the uh, thing behind. What yes. In the, in the mm -hmm. Is simulated based on experience, and again, and somehow, sometimes the wording calibrated is used. That means um, the results of the simulations, especially for example, thermal cooling, you need special parameters like the temperature coefficient between two different substances. You have to measure them, and then you can introduce it. And this may depend also on temperature, on time, and other things. So, at least if you have clarified this, as uh, Professor Frank mentioned then the simulation resembles reality up to this point. Mm -hmm. So, does Ronnie a statement to this? Let's say, just to underline this, uh, simulations are uh, just as good as uh, the tolerances uh, inside the equipment mm -hmm. and the parameters you, you are aware of and uh, the tolerances inside the par parameters. And if you... Yeah, if you are not uh, um, a key in handling of, of these uh, uh, things, you, you have to test at mm. least in order to approve. And uh, then simulation is just, um, let's say, some supporting, um, supporting tool in order to verify performance. Mm -hmm. and, and simulations are based always on a model, it's mm -hmm. clear. Uh, uh, Let's on a computer model. On first. a computer model, yeah. whatever. And let's maybe the, you can focus on the electrical circuit, mm -hmm. like uh, it's uh, like a capacitor, inductance, and so on and so on, and nonlinear elements. And that is quite easy. The results are given, but the question is: Are these models for the transformer are correctly uh, giving the behavior of the transformer? Mm -hmm. And if you make and sometimes the wording calibrated is used that you check if the output resembles the experiments and then you can rely on those stimulations. Right. And is it getting over 
Yes. Yeah, so, uh, First question. Maybe we can really dive a little bit more into practical uh, topics here. Absolutely. There's a question from Janusz Czeszowski, and uh, he is asking, how can you simulate local damage of insulation material introduced during the production process? I would say by best guess. <laughs> 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 well, you, you, what you can be aware of is for sure what kind of damages you will have or you can have during a manufacturing process. But um, uh, considering manual manufacturing, not automized manufacturing, then this is uh, really um, uh, difficult in order to determine where will this uh, failure happen or where will this uh, um, uncertainty be uh, um, um, inside the equipment, and you uh, can just um, um, well consider this if you are aware of the physics behind what does this uh, um, uncertainty and quality issue really um, be linked to. Ralf. And in addition to that, um, there's a big contrast if you look, for example, to automobile, to cars. Mm -hmm. um, there you have a lot of statistics. You have mm -hmm. millions sure. of cars or 100,000 of the same type. So if you are the customer and the car is not working, then you are the only victim, so to say. Mm -hmm. But in the statistics of the production, we can handle that much better. But in case if you produce individual parts, let's say five or three times, mm -hmm. then this question is very difficult to handle because you never know where it happens because it depends on the dimension. Where is it in three space in the material? And then you can only guess and we have a low statistics. So this is really a bad thing to simulate it. That that's the reason to make experiment if the damage is really there and if it's yeah, harmful or not. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to be here at Harvard much more precise even. Um, Uwe, yes. another question or? There is another question, but I like to add that uh, later on. I, maybe we also have, uh, maybe as a comment from my side, there must be also a, differ, uh, a difference between uh, transformers as well as cables. I think with cables it's much easier yes. as you have a continuous production yes. than with uh, a lot of handwork as we know that from power transformers. Mm -hmm. So we keep this uh, later on, this question. Uh, we go to Zurich, to Christian Frank. Um, can you give us a few examples where the physical models are in a limitation in simulation, where they cannot go further? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, of course I can. So this is one of our research uh, topics in, in gaseous dielectrics. So for example, the question, what's the voltage withstand of a certain device? I mean, this is one of the tests, which is typically done in a high voltage lab uh, at the end of production or for commissioning or for research and development. And uh, there's multiple steps. So the first step is what's mentioned before by Ralf as well, is to calculate the electric field distribution. This is um, well-known phenomena, well-known physics, if you know the material properties, like especially under DC, uh, let's say under AC, uh, the permittivity of the material, then you can calculate the electric field distribution very, very well. And you can optimize in the design, let's say curvature radius or, or distances or material thicknesses to adjust for the field distribution that you want. But eventually you want to know what's the voltage strength, the, the breakdown voltage of this device. And now comes um, the um, transition from purely the electric field distribution then to a discharge model. And this is much more complex and this is uh, uh, much more difficult to simulate. The statistical effect, because it's a multiplication over millions of electrons, um, there's a certain statistical dependence of, of initiating the discharge. So when does the first electron or, or charged particle occur at all? And um, then many, many influencing parameters, like for example, the surface properties, are there protrusions um, like this, maybe space charges or, or uh, surface charges which are accumulated on insulators. So this is much, much more difficult. And I can give a very practical example, which I think was a very, very nice study. Mm -hmm. It was in the framework of a secret working group. There, um, it was a round robin analysis. And actually, one, the group, a group of experts decided on a certain design of a, of a part or a part that resembled some power component. And um, uh, volunteering companies and, and uh, research institutions were asked to 
calculate the electric field distribution and predict the breakdown strength. And later on, it was tested. It was built and tested in an independent lab. And surprising, or not surprisingly, it, it confirms what I said before, the electric field distribution, more or less to 1% accuracy, all had the same results. But the breakdown voltage, the prediction of the breakdown voltage, varied by more than 30 or 40 percent. And actually, some were quite above the actual measured breakdown voltage, then, and some even also below. So that was a very interesting study and, and shows where are the limits, for example. A short statement from your side to I Christian. I can confirm this, especially, uh, let's say, a model is always within given boundaries. Mm -hmm. Like uh, if you look at the cell phone, all the integrated uh, devices in there have constant boundary conditions. Mm -hmm. And a transformer or a test setup which has to operate, the boundary conditions can change. For example, if you are going to the physical limits, because every di nowadays we have to reduce everything in size, so we are going more and more to physical limits. Mm -hmm. and, but then still, like we have changing weather conditions, like the sun now, it's difficult for the cameraman uh, to handle it. But if um, we have changing weather, then the conductivity, if it's an auto, auto equipment, can change. And if you don't um, integrated in your simulation, mm -hmm. then it would, would lead to a flash over, okay, as you mentioned. Yeah. So the boundary conditions are very critical. Mm -hmm. Are they correct? And during the test or when the system operates, are they kept in the limits? And mm -hmm. then everything is quite well working. It always needs boundaries and a yes. wide horizon, of course, well, to not leave something out. One it, short statement. It's not only the boundary conditions about, it's also um, the material itself. Because um, having a look at the transformers, at least power transformers, we are using a lot of natural um, um, compound materials mm -hmm. like uh, cellulose uh, materials mm -hmm. or uh, insulation liquids based on oil, mm -hmm. on, on, on um, rapeseed, whatever. And this uh, um, um, naturally wise, these materials do have a certain um, behavior yeah. and um, a scatter, yes. And, mm -hmm. and this must be also tested in order to, uh, to approve if this material is really sufficient mm -hmm. to be used in. And for sure, there are tolerances in. And if you don't perform these tests, and you will never have um, I said, based on the today's database, we will never have um, the, the uh, guarantee that the simulation really fits to the real life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Question to um, Christian Frank, uh, also uh, having this in mind, uh, what kind of equipment do you need to derive material parameters or physical models for a reliable situation and simulation? Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a very good question because it often needs dedicated equipment which is different from the classical testing equipment. So um, uh, to determine the breakdown voltage itself, of course, it's helpful to have a high voltage generator. But for example, to determine the um, avalanche parameters, so let's say ionization parameters or, or attachment parameters or velocities, then you need dedicated equipment. Often it's coming from I'd say uh, disciplines like chemistry, so material properties like thermal conductivity or uh, um, uh, resistivity, these, these are uh, coming then from, from chemistry or from physics. So this example of these four of the parameters of the gas discharge is often uh, used um, atomic and molecular physics based experiments. So it's quite dedicated equipment often, which is handled only by a, a small number of experts, uh, which, which gives you the correct material parameters. And we often get the request from there's multiple disciplines uh, that want to simulate discharges. It's not only in high voltage engineering, it's, it's many uh, industrial manufacturing processes make use of plasma technology. And they all need input parameters of, of gaseous discharges, which are very similar to the ones which we need in high voltage engineering, but they're simply not available. So you need to find a partner that can measure it. And then fortunately enough, there's a few projects, database projects that collect and archive material properties so that they can be used as input parameters for simulation. Ralf, Peach, would you add another aspect to this, what Christian said, or another, mm. are you convinced? Uh, I had um, some years ago, exactly the same. Uh, you have to look at totally different aspects, which is, of course, for the high voltage test equipment or transformer or cable, but the kind of investigation and 
research and spirit mm -hmm. in a different way. Mm -hmm. And this is the basis that all these things can work. As mm -hmm. Okay. We're just checking the microphone, microphone and uh, this is exactly also the break ladies and gentlemen uh, it's half time through our web talk here the first high vault web talk we're gonna do five web talks on the next wednesdays always at 5 p.m central european time the whole world is invited as you can really say here uh, and we are very uh, happy if you join us of course in questions um this subject of this year I think the microphone works again. Perfect. We're coming back to you in a second. Um, the subject of this session is are simulation tools the test labs of the future? Simulation tools, are they the test labs of the future? Uwe Kaltenborn is taking questions from all over the world. Um, do you have some more questions for us? Yeah, first we have a very high rate of participation. We have 226 nice. people are asking questions. So therefore, uh, I have two guys in the background sitting there and sweating uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, trying to figure out uh, to group the questions and exactly. so one concrete question yes. very concrete question to the topic uh, you have discussed right now is coming from Petros uh, Dalamaras uh, from Wuppertal University uh, he mentioned another problem with simulations is that we do not always know the exact correlation of interaction of different parameters. So I think uh, Ralf and Christian, uh, you both knows that very, very well. And uh, I, I expect that you will agree, but maybe you can also give some additional comment on that because we have improved in the last decades. Yes, uh, especially um, if like, if a product or material changes, um, then really we have the new problems facing the interaction of the different materials with temperature, whatever, vibrations and uh, the production process and so on and so on. So this is really a tricky point and for that you need experiments. For the history we know this quite well and also the production process can be handled in that way. But new materials, new design, then you are always surprised by these strange interactions which sometimes happen. Mm -hmm. uh, the question given to Christian in Zurich. Yeah, I, I can only uh, only confirm. Often if, if there is an interaction in between parameters that you're surprised of, that you cannot simulate, it means you're using the wrong physical model. So most often it's impossible to get up initio uh, uh, physics-based uh, models that, that simulate the reality. So you have approximations, that's what a model is based on. It's an approximation of the reality. And you select something based on a certain set of experience that you have, a certain set of measurements that you take. And then all of a sudden you, you change a different variable, a different parameter, if I understood the question correctly. And then all of a sudden you see an unexpected result. And that means apparently the model which you have chosen was incomplete. It might, might have been appropriate for what you have used it before but it's not reflecting the the full truth so changing another parameter may may yeah lead to a completely different result mm -hmm. very short yeah we have so it's many a questions ex uh, a tip, uh, very simple example is if you have equipment outside and on the left side the sun is shining like today mm -hmm. then this side is much more has a higher temperature and if this is not incorporated then you can get into troubles Different climate zones, like yes. in a swimming pool. No, no, when only <laughs> left, left hand side only is, left. Okay. is hotter, in for mm -hmm. example, 20 degrees, and the other side is more cooler okay. because the sun is shining on this side. Uh -huh. More questions, Uwe? Yeah, maybe to stick a little bit to the topic, there is another question or command. Sometimes physical, chemical, and the nature of dielectric materials is not easy to model how far the simulation can handle these issues. So uh, that also fits together with other questions asking for the best, um, the best tools. So uh, I think uh, we are not here in a situation to uh, mention a tool because in the end you have to choose the always the right tool for the right task and in that case the, uh, uh, the model itself is much more important than the software to solve than uh, the model. 
Uh, regarding the material topic, so uh, from my personal experience, it's so that uh, you need to understand the processes behind that will be aging processes, that will be the physical processes. Uh, but uh, maybe I think there also the other colleagues can add something on that as well. Having a look to, to um, materials, aging is important, especially if you have these, as I already mentioned, natural-based um, materials. And um, material parameters will change among the lifetime of the, of the equipment, and uh, this must be for sure considered in the simulations um, during design and development of the equipment, but also during testing, uh, if you are going to use simulations for testing. And if you don't have the appropriate uh, um, physical models behind how this aging is going on and what is result of these out of these agings, what is uh, resulting in, in, in what kind of uh, parameter influences, then you will never gain an accurate and sufficient uh, result of, out of that. I would stay for the moment uh, with Ronnie and of course, ladies and gentlemen, some of the questions that are not answered directly here in this talk, of course, are answered at the end of the session. Then also, of course, you can write us still and then we can continue, uh, not here in the chat, but of course, like the subject that you uh, participate on this web talk and we can like answer it and then we can perhaps integrate it in one of the next sessions. Um, Ronnie, um, let's go to uh, the topic of uh, short circuit testing uh, of power transformers. Here it's actually allowed to be proven by calculation. The next evaluation of the IEC standard is tending to fix physical testing again. Is, is that kind of a back roll? Well, I think there's some rumors behind. Um, it's not uh, that correct that is really uh, the back roll in, in order to really um, establish again tests for a short circuit um, approval. Um, but uh, it's a new way of verification of uh, short circuit withstand capability of the transformer itself. Um, so new IC will um, uh, will require to verify really the uh, short circuit withstand capability by having referen uh, references and by providing simulations which are linked to these references. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you cannot provide this, then for sure maybe it may uh, may appear that. Um, the operator customer will require um, this, uh, again a special test for short circuit testing. Yeah. But what ma what we have to make clear: short circuit test uh, is one really of the worst case tests we can have, uh, because uh, what is not considered there is any kind of damping equipment which is inside the grid, uh, which will really lead to reduced uh, uh, stress penetration of the transformer and uh, during a short circuit test really the transformer is uh, uh, stressed tremendously which is not r um, really um, in, in practical way how this is how the transformer is stressed in operation afterwards mm -hmm. and just to sum up yes mm -hmm. there is a kind of rollback but uh, more or less in the direction of how to verify these uh, simulations mm -hmm. by using references, yes. Mm -hmm. I have some questions that we, yeah. Before you uh, yeah. push the question forward, I, I would really like to insist on the topic because we have more than 20 questions uh, which go into this, that direction. Mm -hmm. But to formulate it more general, there is uh, mainly the question, in which way are standards like IEC standards can replace testing requirements. So there is definitely one key uh, question always on, on the low voltage equipment. We have the situation that our, the temperature rise can be uh, done by calculation or simulation and don't need to be tested, but that's only for low voltage. And uh, I think uh, from the complexity of the high voltage equipment, we always have this limitation that we would like to do real tests. But nevertheless, we have seen that there is a, a possibility to put that into standards. And the question is, how will that evolve then in the future? And maybe what will be then the contribution on CIGRE? So uh, Ralf can maybe uh, take that forward. And uh, what is the status are on that on, our, on, on the academic uh, world? 
maybe some words about Segre is divided in 16 study committees and one for example is Transformers A1 and um, the questions which are handled there in working groups uh, they are coming from the audience not like today mm -hmm. but then that uh, so-called yeah, working group is founded which can handle uh, and try to answer those questions and those questions arise again and again mm -hmm. because um, different designs, different materials are used and then the, the questions open which we just mentioned and they have to be investigated theoretically or by experiments. And to Christian? I must admit that I'm not involved in activities that really aim for standardizing simulations uh, in, in, in high voltage engineering. So I think there is a lot uh, a lot that can be done during the development phase. Maybe there can also be some things done to extrapolate from certain known regions of operation to, to longer regions of operations. I've, I've, I've seen examples of, for example, disconnector switching with, with certain bus bar lengths and so on. But I'm not involved or aware that there is uh, really activities going on that replace testing for definite uh, in, in some standards. Great. Uber, before we go in the last round, some more questions to this subject? Yeah, so I, as that also goes in the direction of Christian, uh, because it goes it, uh, into the uh, topics you are doing in, in, in Zurich for the, for the gases, uh, has simulation of dynamic processes the same quality as steady processes, especially for the insulation behavior? And I think uh, I expect a very clear, dedicated answer from your side. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that, that's about the most complex thing you can you can ask. Uh, first of all, dynamics can also evolve over over different timescales. So the dynamics of the discharge in, in a gas, the, 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 the breakdown, that's on a nanosecond timescale. And it's actually on, on uh, um, a very, very difficult uh, to, 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 to treat this fully numerically. And then there can be a, a dynamics on a timescale that more reflects towards aging. So that means for example, the slow ingress of humidity into a solid dielectric. And um, I mean, these are aspects which I think can be more easily introduced into the simulation because you can measure the material properties under this slowly varying um, uh, topics. But uh, again, to make a statement of this is the lifetime of this equipment, for this you would need to know exactly the boundary conditions of which we talked before, so ambient temperature, most probably also cycles. Many defects can happen. The aging can be slightly different over, over uh, object to object, even though they have been produced uh, the, the, in the same quality. So I doubt that this part will be completely uh, obsolete uh, for testing and can be done completely by simulation in the near future. <laughs> Over one question. It's great that we have so many questions. I think I still have some questions here in our in the back, but uh, maybe we should go on with uh, the next chapter because uh, that's also a very interesting Absolutely. point. And uh, so everybody is always expecting that we come up with that. I think it's called digitalization. That's exactly the point. That's a question to you both here, to Ronnie Fritsche and uh, Ralph Peach. Um, you can like a player who's starting to answer. Digitalization, digitalization, as we said, in the test lab, of course, data transformed into information to take decisions. So, data taking decisions. Um, you have this word of a digital twin. It's a very common buzzword uh, in, in the sector for, for the experts. What does it mean to you? Who's starting? Um, let's say uh, I know quite well about gas insulated systems and they are much more easier than transformers. So in that case you have only gas, a conductor and an enclosure. And in some cases you have solid materials. Uh, let's uh, uh, remove the material. Then you can really have a perfect model which simulates the gas insulated substation quite well. Mm -hmm. Then you can increase electric field strength or the volt by that the field strength and so on and can making tests and then your twin behaves like that because the model the reality is quite simple this is definitely different than for a transformer yes, sure. and as you already mentioned um, 
digital twin is a kind of buzzword yeah used for different things many of uh, equipment uh, manufacturers are using this for um, well the the digital replication of the manufacturing of of the equipment itself Uwe? yeah I would like to ask uh, if we can get the last two slides from our the, our the, uh, the slide deck we have prepared oh, yeah. in the back. Mm -hmm. Would that be possible? The last two slides. Of course, and we check immediately to bring this in, to visualize it. Mm -hmm. Ronnie, now it's, now it's exactly yeah. your Thank turf. You. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect match. So, um, digital twin is used in different uh, applications by today. So, our idea of a digital di twin, let's say a holistic digital twin for the uh, whole equipment, uh, beginning from the development um, or design phase of, of the equipment itself among the uh, manufacturing and afterwards during testing uh, and uh, for sure also in operation. And uh, that's why we have introduced a new kind of digitized uh, product since former advances is, is it called for uh, large power transformers where we are using simulation capability in order really uh, to um, simulate in parallel to the operation of the transformer the um, physical behavior of the transformer inside in order to d determine uh, aging behavior, in order to determine loss of life and uh, in order to uh, check if um, anything is really uh, in, in good mood or if there is uh, anything um, going wrong, wrong in the wrong dire direction. These simulations are verified by measurement of uh, some parameters of the transformer during the operation and I would say um, having this in future this is the key at least in order to think about if we will be able in future also to replace testing by simulations having this uh, uh, large amount of data available which puts us in the advance in order uh, uh, in the situation in order really to um, create a lot of knowledge about material behavior material interaction, material aging, and this will pro um, um, put us in the situation in future in order really to optimize based on simulations and based on optimized models, even by using um, also artificial intelligence, for instance. A statement with this and then the second uh, slide? Or we should we... D only this one. Okay, great. Then Ralf, please. And exactly that high voltage testing nowadays is not just put high voltage on it and see everything is working or not. Um, you put more and more diagnostic and on that, like water content, chemical decomposition products like in the GIS, you can do it online, or the water ingredient, and this is the basics for increasing the quality of models. Yes, exactly the point, and this is also what Frank uh, mentioned beforehand. Um, simulation is just as good as the models behind, and uh, we are we just we, we only can be aware of the model is good enough if you have really uh, proven this by doing tests, by doing measurements in addition. And today, database is not that uh, sufficient enough in order to have this all already gained. So that's why we have also um, in our system digital twin sensor advanced putting additional sensors in in order really to approve and to verify. Um, the uh, accuracy of these models. Mm -hmm. Over at this point, we have kind of the last possibilities to ask or to answer some more questions out of the chat or the email, or then we are going already to your uh, statement. Now, I would like to add some words on uh, the topic as well, because we are also working on digital solutions uh, from testing, and this is uh, maybe a, a different approach, because uh, what we are doing is that we can have uh, the digitalization of our test results with a very high resolution, and we can generate the information out of that and play that back also into the production process. And combining the data, you can gain from the production process or even from the stage of the product development so you have uh, along the 
generation or the or the build up of the equipment already sufficient data which can then be transferred into the phase of operation and uh, with additional measurement this will be then on site measurements that can be then automatically integrated and the lifetime consumption can be estimated out of that so uh, we have already done solutions where we integrate the test system into our ERP systems of manufacturers transform manufacturers and for that uh, we can utilize the test data also to optimize the process of production as well as the uh, production parameters and even the product design process Nevertheless, uh, we still have also some questions yeah. and uh, one topic uh, which uh, goes also then a little bit more than uh, to Sigre uh, as well as uh, universities is the question in which way we can do simulations and uh, predictions with simulations for stochastical processes and especially for the uh, prediction of the breakdown of dielectric air insulation systems and uh, in which way we uh, can combine or in which way we can describe the statistical or stochastical processes in, in the correct way by simulation and how far we are or, or, or what, what will be the difference between the simulation results and the effective results. Yeah. I know that there will be no detailed D answer. Yeah but maybe we can get some inputs. With a long question, short answer in the round, we start with, uh, we start with Zurich. Let's go to Christian. Okay, the, the challenge is here, the short answer. Um, yes, there is a <laughs> lot of statistics involved, um, the statistics of the breakdown process itself, but often uh, the origin of the breakdown. So for example, the defects in the materials. So one aspect of, of covering statistics, for example, is to make a systematic uh, screening of all possible options and locations of failures, different sizes, different uh, um, uh, materials or different severity of this um, uh, manufacturing and then make a probability distribution of how likely it is that this failure will occur and then you can map this uh, uh, to the result of your simulation and get maybe a probability distribution of the breakdown voltage itself. If I want to shake, keep it short, I limit it to this aspect. Excellent. Just Guys? maybe two cents in addition to that. Uh, there are limits given by nature that the statistic or the variation has this size. And if you're going to this limit, then you cannot improve the models because the, the, the scatter is there. Mm -hmm. And you can try to handle it um, with the boundary conditions, technically whatever, but still you will have the scatter, especially in breakdown. This is always the same question also for us. Up to which limit can we go? Mm -hmm. But then there are the physical limits which we can't change. Okay. Ronnie? On short note, uh, nothing to add. I would say. <laughs> Great. This, this because uh, sorry, just please, uh, just one uh, additional sentence. And this is, uh, at least, this is a challenge also in design, f doing simulations. Yeah. yeah. And that's fine because we, uh, of course, it's always uh, interesting to have more questions than we can uh, really answer here. We do a very short uh, statement round at the end of this talk. The subject of this talk, our first high vault web talk, which we do now every Wednesday here at 5 p.m. Central European time. Uh, this ta uh, today's topic were uh, our simulation tools, the test labs of the future. One or one and a half sentence uh, from uh, Christian, Ralf and Ronnie. Christian, please. I would say they are not the test lab of the future, but they will be more prominent within the test labs of the future. More prominent, what would you say? Um, and uh, we will also gain uh, more information like water content, content inside the material, the uh, special design, the different kinds of materials, and then that can improve the model. You need more parameters measured. Okay, and Ronnie? Well, simulations will put more transparency and uh, more knowledge on our equipment. Um, but at least um, we do have, as an um, equipment manufacturer, we do have the responsibility for public, for environment, and for health and safety in order to provide a real re reliable, safe, and, and uh, um, um, product uh, working in, in, in within the sp given specifications. And this we have to um, guarantee uh, and to verify by doing tests. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you very much. Beco before we come to the end, so uh, the value of simulation is quite uh, on its own fairly uh, limited. And uh, we discussed this, of course, the discussion goes on, of course, because we are here in a live process. And this is, so to, uh, to say, the, the questions of today were the questions really of today. And uh, the, the research is going on. Thank you very much uh, to Zurich, to uh, Christian Frank. Stay in the line for the moment, to Ronnie Fritsche and to Ralf Peach. Herzlichen Dank. Thank you very much to Uwe. And we have a little gift for our guests. Oh, sorry, I'm uh, walking out of the camera. Do you see this is live? It's the, uh, the church here in Dresden out of chocolates. You will all know it. You can put it in your shelf. And the best now, we give it to uh, Zurich. And um, Christian, you have to print it out uh, with a 3D <laughs> printer with Swiss chocolate. Uh, you mm. see, it's, it's excellent. excellent. <laughs> this, is all, this is your church, um, the Frauenkirche aus Dresden. And thank, uh, you, thank you very much for your participation. I put it to Uwe. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, yeah, we have this wonderful view now and you have seen that we were live because the sun was like moving during our 50 minutes now really to the west and uh, here in Germany uh, in about uh, some hours we have sunset. Thank you very much. I think I forgot nothing. I said thank you, Uwe. And also thank you to our colleagues uh, Uwe Alex, and Alex, uh, which uh, collected the questions from our, from our participants. Absolutely. And there will be the outlook for the next session. The next session, you will have the outlook in a moment here on a screen. It's on next uh, Wednesday at 5 p.m. Thank you very much, and we hope to see you there. See you in one week. Goodbye from Dresden. <laughs>